Well, it's time to bring it on with the email questions that you all have sent in. And Pat, this first one comes from Janet, who says, if our nation were to lose a big percentage of our oil supply, how would it specifically affect us everyday folks? For example, what kind of jobs, finances, goods, housing, etc., would be affected, and what can we do to prepare in advance? Well, uh, there's not a great deal you could do except possibly to, uh, well, if you had a generator, it might help. They, they run off of oil. Uh, you might get one of those wood stoves or, uh, you know, to help along the way. But the truth is, there's not a whole lot we can do. We, we operate on an oil-based economy, and uh, if it's not oil, it's natural gas. Um, so I, I, I don't think right now, if things are looking the way they are, that there's going to be any great shortage. Even if we lost the Middle East, we have plenty here in the United States. And uh, so I, I don't think the chances of us losing any, but it would run the price of everything. Plastics come out of petroleum. Uh, chemicals of all kinds come out of petroleum. Uh, the electricity that we have is powered in part by coal, but in part by, by natural gas. That's, uh, you know, petroleum-based. So our economy is really very much dependent on this. And if the price of oil goes really way up high, it could... Uh, well, it would just uh, it would mean that it would be a, the, the world would be in a depression. It would have fewer jobs. Um, the prices of everything would skyrocket. It would be tough. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, this is Alicia who says, Pat, how do I ask and trust God to answer my prayers for needs in my life when there are Christians in other parts of the world dying and being tortured for their faith? I find myself feeling guilty when praying for my needs because of these comparisons and also finding it hard to trust him to meet my family's needs when clearly the dying and tortured Christians' prayers aren't being answered. Uh, I think it's very noble that you're concerned about other people, but the truth is that... Um, <clears throat> You know, uh, I was reading today about Jesus, and and uh, it said, uh, of whom do the kings of this world extract taxes, their own sons or other people? And the answer was they get them from other people. The sons are free. I, I think God looks after his sons and daughters, and uh, they have a special relationship to him. So you don't have to feel guilty because somebody else has got a difficult situation. But what you should feel is an urgency to help them. That's what God wants us to do, not to feel guilty that you've got a good deal and they don't, but that, that you have a good deal and you want to share it with somebody else that doesn't. That's what he'd like to see. All what right. about the part where she says she's, she has trouble trusting God because uh, when clearly the dying and tortured Christians' prayers aren't being answered? You don't know all the situation. You know, it's just a shame what goes on in this world. There's evil in the world, and, and uh, you, you don't know what you can do. But the biggest thing is you pray for them, and if enough people pray, God will hear and answer their prayers. Just like the, the, when the Israelites were down in Egypt, they were under bondage, and they were crying to God. And God came down, and he said, Listen, I have seen the suffering of my people. Now there you go, Moses, and deliver them. All right. This is Mary who says, why didn't God like Cain's offerings? Why didn't God tell him how to improve them? Seems unfair <laughs> to me. Look, get one thing in your mind. The judge of all the earth doesn't do wrong. God knows what to do, and what he does is not fair or unfair. In the hearts of men, yeah. But uh, in terms of Cain and Abel, one had to do with an offering of an animal. That was the sacrifice that spoke of Jesus. The other was the fruit of the sweat of a man's brow. He had tilled his field. He had harvested his crops. He would brought forth his grain. And it was self-effort given to God as opposed to a grace offering of a lamb shed from the foundation of the earth. And that's why. Okay. This is Tony who says the Bible refers to the Antichrist and our society has always assumed it's a man and a political leader of some type. Any chance it could be a woman? Oh, women are too sweet to be the Antichrist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <okay>. No, <laughs> I'm sorry. The Bible is explicit. It's a he. All right. <laughs> okay, Emily says my husband of 25 years passed away two years ago. My ex-husband says he still loves me and I admit I have feelings for him still. What's your take on our being together? We're both in our 70s. I don't know if I'm being immoral. I've prayed about this. Maybe it's God's way of taking my loneliness away. Well, I don't see anything reason you couldn't get back together again with your mm -hmm. 
former husband, husband. the one that, the, you, that you're living with is dead. Uh, I, I don't know about immorally. You <clears throat> decide you're going to have marital relations with the former husband without mm -hmm. being married. I think there's no reason that you need okay. to consummate something. I mean, you need to solemnify something. Uh, how you do it is between you and the Lord, but you need to do something, not just say, well, I'm going to have a casual fling with my ex-husband, and right. then, then am I being immoral? Right. Seven right. years old. God bless you. You're still in the game. All right. <laughs>